doing free code camp, JavaScript algos and data structures. We are on the regular expressions course on challenge six of 33. So today we're going to find more than the first match. Um, so in the previous lesson, we learned about the match method and how we can use it to find, uh, to get back an array of matches out of a string, right? So in this example, we can see we have a string test string and it's equal to repeat, repeat, repeat. We then have a regex that looks for the, the word repeat capital R. We then take our test string and we match regex, match our regex, which is our expression, and the output of this method call, this function call of the regex match method, this would return the array with one value repeat. Okay, we would just get it once, even though there's three of them, um, because we just used this expression forward slash repeat forward slash so it only returns to us an array of the first match so what this lesson is teaching us is that we can add a new flag which as we learned a flag is just a something that represents something to change the behavior of this expression so we can add a with the previous flag we learned about was the i to ignore case so we would find repeat uh, forward slash repeat forward slash and add an i here and that would find any word repeat any case, capital or lowercase. There's a new flag that we're learning about now. That's the G flag. So you can see forward slash repeat forward slash G. That G stands for global. So it's going to find all the repeating matches, right? Globally within the string, not just the first one. If you do not add the G at, after the forward slash word forward slash, it's only going to return to you the match will the match method, it will only return to you an array of the first match. Okay. If you add the G, it'll return to you an array of every match across the string, right? Globally within the string, every match. So that's the idea. The G flag is probably the most common G and I, hence why we learned them first, the G and the I flag, because G global, right? Give me all the matches and the I flag for ignore case. So give me any match that is uppercase, lowercase, or any combination of the two. So you can see why those two would be the most commonly used and also the most uh, relevant to actually learning this stuff. So what we're going to do is use the regex star regex. So star regex uh, and find and extract both twinkle words from our twinkle star variable. So if we look at the code here, twinkle star variable says twinkle twinkle little star in a string and then we have a star regex variable that's equal to an empty regex and then we have once again our result variable that's going to be equal to our method our function call our actual method call of this match method so thusly result will be equal to whatever that method the match returns to us which as we know is going to be an array of matches so all we have to do here is first off, once again, let's change our expression to actually target what we need to target. So here we can see we're targeting the word twinkle. So let's type in the word twinkle. Wait, twinkle like that. Okay, twinkle. And now uh, we want to make sure it grabs every instance of the word twinkle. So not just the first one, we need all the matches. So let's add the G flag to grab all globally. So now we're going to get any matches back. But if we look at our string here, we can see the first one is capital T twinkle. The second one is lowercase t twinkle. So we need to ignore case as well because the prompt here told us to extract both of the words. And as I can see, both of them are different. So I need to also ignore case. And oh, sure enough, if I had just read the prompt, it says you can have multiple flags on your regex by just like that, right? Forward slash word, forward slash, and then the flags. You can just pair them one after another. So if I want to ignore case, as we just talked about, that's the I flag for ignore case. So the G to grab all of them globally. So grab me both of them. And then the I flag to grab all of them, not looking at case, right? So ignoring case, grab me all matches. That's what this part here is saying. So for this string, twinkle, grab me all matches and ignore case is what that's saying. Okay. So now our expression looks good. We know what it's going to do. That should be, that should be good. Now we just need to change the result to be our actual 
method to actually call the method. So as we know with the match method, we take this string, test string, and we call the dot match method on it, and we pass dot match the actual expression, the actual regex. So result is going to be equal to the string dot match. So dot match in this twinkle star string. So match. And then what are we going to match? We're going to match this expression, this regex expression, which is called star regex. And then now result is going to be equal to that expression, that function. So whatever this function call returns to us is now stored in result. Okay, so I've said this before, but whenever you have a function call or a method call, this is a method, this is a call of it, and you assign it to a variable, whatever that method or function returns is now stored at that variable. So if I console.log, if I can type result, you can see now that yes, result is an array of the matches because that's what the match method returns. And sure enough, yes, it did in fact grab both matches of twinkle capital T and twinkle lowercase t. Because once again, G for global, so grab me both of them, it did. And then the I to grab both of them, any match really, uh, ignoring case. So lowercase and capital and also any combination of the two. Okay, so that's why this works. We needed both flags for this one, so that's a good little practice to remember that I flag ignores case, uh, but that should pass. So there we go. Hope that helped. Hope that made sense. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I will do my best to get back to you. And yeah, see you guys in the next video.